Hi, everyone. Welcome along to the latest edition of The Verdict. Angus McNay taking a couple of well-deserved weeks off, so standing in for his place for, for just a couple of shows and starting off by taking a, a look back at an even spread between Glorious Goodwood, some of the stronger races there, or noteworthy ones, and also Newmarket over the weekend. They staged a Friday-Saturday cards, or two cards, and a couple of horses certainly to pick out, a couple of races. We'll start off with the success of Noble Style, who was a four to seven favourite for the Six Furlong Novice on Friday night. It was the race that got racing underway there. Good firm ground. A little bit of a headwind. We'll talk about that in a moment or two's time. Four to seven, the price of Noble style. Millstream, 13 to eight, chief in opposition. And Wallop, seemingly, was going to be the best of the debutants. 11 to one certainly did play a bit of a leading role. Let's have a look back at the race itself. And you'll see that there. Um, do pick out the horse that was drawn in six. That was Wallop who got a little bit of a coming together. It was quite an aptly named horse for the beginning. Uh, the Godolphin horse we're looking at came uh, from stall three, that noble style, the winner, and spot the white cap over on the far side in around about fifth or sixth at that place. Uh, that was Millstream. Millstream, who was one from one, coming from what looked a reasonable race at Donny, won that in good style, cost a fair sum, 350 or so thousand, and quite well regarded. As mentioned, looking for that little bit of cover because it was deceptive enough, but there was a headwind. The time wasn't electric trick but the performances of the first three I think really noteworthy you can spot the winner on the left in the all blue of Godolphin not seen since winning an Ascot race back in the spring he was ruled out when seemingly a leading fancy for the Coventry and the time we'd seen him or since we'd seen him the strength in his form as he moved beautifully through this you can see it there had been really well boosted courtesy of the likes of Woolbank courtesy of Raw Scotsman as well this is the point they began to quicken up in the middle of them was Wallop, who ran a cracker on debut. They'll be delighted, despite the fact the horse has been beat, was seven plus lengths clear of the fourth. And over on the far side, the eventual second in the race, uh, Mill Springs has run an absolute belter. It was the consensus uh, that Holly Dor would have liked to have had a fight. She was on the second. She would have liked to have had a bit of a fight with the Godolphin horse earlier, uh, Mill Stream, sorry, than, than when they did. Uh, because it was a case that Jane Chappelheim, the, the trainer of the second, thought that she couldn't see, and her colt couldn't see, the run of the Godolphin horse, who moved so powerfully through this. They are going to be going at pattern races next. The second is looking at stepping up in trip at the Acom, a group race at York's Ebor meeting. The winner is going to go to that same meeting as well, but sticks six furlongs to the gym crack. I don't think Jane Chappelheim, speaking to the, the trainer of the second afterwards, really wants to be taking on the winner again, but I think they all feel like they've emerged with strong horses from this. They were running into a headwind at the end. You can see that the winner as he pricked his ears crossing the line, was still full of running. I was just so taken with the way that he smoothly glided through this. I mentioned we're going to see quicker times, we're going to see stronger run races throughout the contest of the day, but there was a headwind. They're running on the water ground, and I think three strong colts emerged from this. Godolphin had won this a couple of years ago with Lazuli, group class sprinter. You do wonder whether they've got one of the same sort of calibre going forwards. There's your winner afterwards. It's been quoted at 16 to 1 for the 2000 guineas for next year. It's a really, really promising race. That was kind of unavoidable when looking back at the best of last week's action and some of the stuff that you might have missed with Glorious Goodwood going on. That was the first race at Newmarket on Friday. Uh, a very strong novice and one that I wanted to keep in mind. Two horses in particular at the front under penalties, running very well indeed. And Wallop has to go into the notebook after that fine third. Another race to look at Friday night from Newmarket was a Phillies novice over a mile. Laurel, 6-5 to five and strong ahead of her debut. Mashaya, rating of 95 in the book, finally looking for that first win, 2-1. to one. Midnight Mole, 1-1, one 5-1 one, to one for this. And Lady Lulu, stablemate of the favourite, 15-2. to two. But Laurel was the one that they wanted. We'll take a look back. You can see there uh, over the mile on the July course, the winner, Laurel, coming from four in the Judmont Silks. Mashaya, you've got to have a look at her. She came out of three with the star on the cap. And Lady Lulu, one from the left as we see it, the stablemate of Laurel. What we have here is a seemingly explosive filly. She's got a turn of foot, but I think she'll stay further as well. Track the run of the winner. She's got the Judmont Silks with Rab Havlin aboard. The time wasn't necessarily a brilliant one. Again, they were running into a bit of a headwind uh, with a finishing speed percentage over the last three furlongs of 112.85. The winner showed a real burst of speed. She also belied her inexperience. Given the fact that this was her debut, she'd obviously had issues or, or a couple of setbacks, maybe just took time to get to the track. Uh, given the fact that we're at the end of July in her three-year-old year and she was hitting the track for the first time. She was content to sit back, track through Mashaya, 
who of course had got listed place form, courtesy of the pretty poly. She'd run fifth in the Sandringham, surely one of the best maidens around with a rating of 95. Speaking to Henry Spiller afterwards, the trainer of the second, I think he just felt that yet again we might have bumped into one. But you're about to see the point that, that Havlin was near enough statuesque. He was sitting in behind Mashaya. Eventually the pace was going to quicken as they turned into a bit of a sprint. Mashaya was still travelling all right at this point, but Havlin just weaving in and out in behind, gave her a couple of shakes. And when the gap did appear, with Henry Spiller's other horse in the race with the white cap about to go backwards, he went for it. There was another newcomer up the inside. He went through for that gap. Mashaya didn't close it. And from this point onwards, it was all about the brilliance that she's got. She's got a pedigree to die for. She's by Kingman. She's out of a filly who, a decade and a half or so ago, won the Pretty Polly Group 1 at the Curra. And she's absolutely danced home. She skipped home in the hands of Rab Havlin. And that rate's a huge introduction. There are no big entries going forwards. What they want to go and do with her, I'm not entirely sure. They also scooped uh, the big race, the Chalice Stakes, on the Saturday with a nice three-year-old in the form of emotion, just stacking it up at Newmarket over the weekend. But you'll see there on the head-on that even though on the first start of her career she was content to go through the gap, didn't shy away from going up the rail, and off she went. That really was quite an impressive debut. As mentioned, no big entries, but she's in the tracker, Laurel. She has to be off the back of that. Mashaya, surely at some point the second will find her introduction. And don't rule out the third. That was Lady Lulu. She's a stablemate of Laurel. She was a bigger price, we saw that. But she ran encouragingly enough, and she's beautifully bred. Her uh, dam being a close relative of the, the outstanding racehorse and, and brilliant Cyrus he is now, Lope de Vega. We are going to concentrate largely on the winner, though. She showed the ability to sprint at the end of her race for all that she's got the pedigree to get a little bit further as well. And Laurel, I saw a lot of talk about her on social media as well. There might be. Speaking to Thady Gosden afterwards as well. And before, he said he liked her. She's a nice filly, but when they go and do that on the track, they've got something to dream about. Laurel is one, surely, for the racing TV trackers. She was very, very good on debut on Friday night. Hard to get away with the verdict and not talking about the Qatar Sussex Stakes uh, Wednesday, which was the centrepiece of day two of Glorious Goodwood. Baid, one to six. Of course, there was no Caribus, uh, so Baid's task, it would have seemed, was looking easier. One to six. Alcohol free, 11 to one, back to a mile and looking to win the race again. Modern Games, 12 to one. Order of Australia, 20s and 50s about both Chindit and Angel Blur, who we'll be talking about. Bathrat Leon who was a significant runner in the race from the early stages, 66 to one. Spot where he came from. We'll have a look at the draw. Uh, round the mile there, the round mile at Goodwood, by Thrat Leon coming out of five. Your winner, that was Baid coming out of two. Uh, Modern Games, the Godolphin runner, who was, yeah, as Charlie Appleby said it, he's no super sub, given the fact that he'd won a couple of group ones around the world. He's finished in second in the end from still one and alcohol free in three. The Japanese horse taking them along, the one that had won the Godolphin mile on the dirt, so quite a difference from the dirt in Maidan to the turf in Sussex, but they weren't electric fractions. You're going to have stronger runnings of this race uh, from a time perspective. You're going to have harder fractions, and it did turn out to be that little bit of a sprint at the end, where Baid, of course, we know, came out on top. You can spot the blue and white striped cap uh, of Jim Crowley. One I wanted to mention, though, is right at the back, and he was a 50 to 1 shot. That's Angel Blur, who'd won the vintage stakes at this very meeting last year, of course, turning around quickly from, from Ascot. And he went on to scoop a top-level race at the back end of the season in France. A very good horse. We hadn't seen an awful lot of him this season prior. Just have a look at him, because he was... Well, he was quite keen in the early stages. We might still be talking about a time when he could be looking at softer ground down the line, and it might be just a little bit quick for him. There's no rain about. Of course, there's none at the moment. They'd watered but it might be that he'll find his feet on a softer surface. It was reported that he finished lame, but hopefully he's all OK, Angel Blur, because he covered the final three furlongs in a time second only to the brilliant winner. This was the point where, where Crowley kicked. A couple of those final three furlongs were, were quite electric from Baid. One crack with the left hand, two crack with the left hand, and off he goes. Simple as nine from nine for the brilliant horse Baid, but just have a look at that grey head who ran on into fifth. He's got an entry in the celebration mile. Now, as mentioned, he, he finished lame, but hopefully he's all OK. And at some point, hard though it is to believe, given the circumstances, the weather in Britain at the moment, the ground might just turn for him. And he could be one for the Prix de la Forêt on Arc Day. He could be one to come back to Goodwood if all OK, when maybe we'll have had a bit of rain about, for the celebration mile at the end of the month. Group 2 company, you won't be bumping into Baid. And from my perspective, where Angel Blur turns up next, based on these, these finishing fractions, given the fact that he was quite keen in the early stages, well, 
he could just be a bit of a player, so I'm keeping him in mind. The winner, of course, he's going to go for the Jobmont International. It might just be that he's going to prove even better than he is over a mile when he hits 10 furlongs. I love the quote from William Haggis where he said, I said to Jim Crowley in the paddock, we've got him for two more races after this, so let's just enjoy him and make the most of him. And I think that is the case. The seconds run an absolute belter, but we're going to see if he gets that evenly run 2,000 metres, 10 furlongs on the Knavesmire, and he goes to York, we might just see an even more explosive performance. He's obviously got as much as has been talked about, that, that the pedigree being by See the Stars, who, a bit like this fella, only seems to have pulled out too much, or enough. Uh, see the Stars was like that as a racehorse. We'd see him, look, and the uh, fist pump from the local jockey, Jim Crowley, who had a great week. It might just be that he's going to be even better over 10 furlongs. We know that even in a slowly run group one mile like that, not explosively run race, I should say, he's got the gears to be able to kick through those final few furlongs and kill off a race, and kill off a race in... Well, from the likes of Modern Games, who, of course, is a Group 1 Class 3-year-old, had won the uh, French Guineas and had won at the Breeders' Cup last year. He couldn't lay a candle, really, on the winner. So it's a case of that horse going for the Jumont International. Will he be even better? My personal take is that he will um, when he takes on the likes of Mishriff and co. And maybe if they go strongly run, we'll see an even better Bayid. But he's good enough to be doing what he's doing. He's nine from nine. But the, the takeaway from my perspective was at the end of that race, with the promise of autumn ground coming, hopefully, Angel Blur could be quite a player if he's all OK from Goodwood. If he goes to the celebration mile and maybe a target or two in the autumn, I'm keeping Angel Blur in mind. He's a bit of an also ran from the Sussex Stakes, but the figures were quite telling as to how he ran. That was a look back at Baid's success in the Sussex Stakes on Wednesday. Sticking with Goodwood and also having a look at the Wednesday as well, one of the later races on the card, quite a significant two-year-old race this one. Considering we had the Molcom earlier in the day, it was an opportunity to see the Platinum Queen again. She was five to six for the British EBF Alice Keppel Phillies conditions race. Like the Molcom, run over five furlongs. 11 to two was the price about both Star of Lady M, who showed speed, and Union Court as well. And in fact, the front three in the market rather dominated this uh, elsewhere all the time. Six to one, 12 to one, and bigger the others. But it was fast and it was furious and it was another brutal success for them, the Platinum Queen. In the Midland Park Silks, absolutely loved this filly, heading slightly in the air as she broke from stall eight. Union Court coming from nine and Star of Lady M from the inside berth in one. But there we are. She's just got that ability to run hard and sustain fractions to take everything else one by one out of their comfort zone. We'd seen what she'd done at York the time before and on the ratings coming into this particular race, into the Alice Keppel Phillies conditions race, she had it at her mercy. Could she replicate it at, York, at Goodwood from what she'd done at York? Well, the answer was an emphatic yes. And what was quite exciting as well is that earlier in the day, we'd had a very, very good time clocked up by Trillium in the Molcom Stakes over this very course and distance, but of course, a group race. Trillium, who showed that real turn of foot as she burst down the near side uh, to beat Rocket Rodney and co in the Molcom. Well, she clocked a great time. And then a little bit later on, a couple of hours later, look at this filly pulling away. She clocks an even better time. Lots was talked about that and the, the ability clearly this filly's got. I think some of the, the quotes that I found afterwards or that, that came out, Asheen Orr, who's the lucky man aboard this filly, <laughs> I love the way that he said, it doesn't feel like she's going that fast. It feels like she's within her comfort zone. And she's clearly absolutely flying at the moment. What she did at York, completely substantiated going into this. She had a decent rating. And she's obviously got the ability to run that much harder, that much faster across the sustained five furlongs. What Trillium had done, she'd shattered it a little bit later on. Where she'd have finished in the Molcom, if she'd have replicated um, a style like this. We saw Trillium held up to win the Molcom. This filly just jumps and runs. Well, we'll never know. But it might just be that she's going to have a much deeper test further down the line. They're talking about sending her to the Roses at York, which, having a look at that race, as she keeps the two-year-olds, um, I don't think it's a race that Richard Fahey's ever won, but if she turns up, then surely the, race, uh, the Roses will be a race run for her mercy, the Platinum Queen. There is also talk of taking her into Group 1 company. I'd love to see her supplemented for the, for the Nunthorpe. We know what two-year-olds can do, and two-year-old fillies as well. We'll see, that, given the amount of weight that they get. But I think they might just be waiting, reading a couple of the comments, to take her to France and go a little bit later down the season and take on the older horses, the Group 1 class horses as well, in the Prix de l'Abbé on Arc Day. She's bouncing on this summer ground. The amount of speed that she showed, really quite striking. She bounced out of the stalls as well, which was key for her. And if she can continue doing that and flying the stalls from an early stage, 
well, she's got a huge, huge chance going forward. Where she'd have finished in the Malkin, we'll never know. But if it is to be the Roses, and then later on as well in the season, tackling the Prix de l'Abbé, then she's going to be a leading player because, of course, she's a two-year-old filly. She gets that significant weight pull. And she's also absolutely flying at the moment. I think he was smiling after the race, Sarah Sheenor, but um, I just love that quote that he said that he didn't even feel like she's travelling that fast. That's how controlled her speed must be. She caught consistent fractions and off she went. That was a really impressive winner. That was the Platinum Queen, who a couple of hours after Trillium had lowered the record, it was the Platinum Queen who didn't leave it too long uh, for an even faster time. She was so impressive at Goodwood on Wednesday afternoon. We're going to head back to Newmarket now for the second of their two-day meeting and a bit like the Friday actually taking the first race of the day. It's the 120, which was the Turner's British EBF Phillies Novice Stakes run over seven furlongs. It was a, a selection of horses that had run versus maybe one or two who got lovely pedigrees and all about potential when hitting the track for the first time. Luckin Brew had had a run, six to four, but had also been pulled out of a, decla a declaration at Goodwood earlier in the week. They'd opted for, for Newmarket instead. She was strong in the market. Earlier in the day, Prepense on debut, five to two, had been shorter, but still for Sir Michael Stout, this beautifully bred filly was pretty well regarded and went off second in the market. Arse of Magic, one run, 11 to two. Commissioning had been backed ahead of the debut, 13 to two. Canadian Smoke Show, seven to one, uh, back in fifth in the market. And it did rather involve the first five in the market. Let's take a look back at the performance of Commissioning. Commissioning, uh, she came out of stall 10. Propense, the Judmont filly, have a look at her. Not the best beginning it by any means, but she came out of three. Canadian Smoke Show, two, Art of Magic, five. And Luckin Brew in the Michael Table Silk, sitting near the speed, which was cut out by Art of Magic, uh, that filly came out of 11. I think that this, uh, this race is going to read extremely well going forward. Your winner, uh, she's in the dark silks with the pale uh, epaulettes there. She was in around about fourth from the back at this stage under Frankie de Tori. It was yet another day, yet another Kingman filly on uh, debut to win on the July course for John and Thady Gosden. She slipstreamed in behind Luckin Brew in the table silks. And I mentioned that on Friday there was a headwind reported. It was more of a crosswind on this occasion. I don't think they were quite running into the into the winds that were reported on the Friday afternoon. The direction had changed. Frankie de Tori was really telling about this filly. You can see that maybe she'd run a little bit green in the early stages she was entitled to. He said he'd gone into Clarehaven that morning, had a bit of a sit on her, but that's all he knew. At this point, he switched her out, a crack on the left there, and off she went. And I think that she's buried pretty good fillies here. She's pulled away, which was really quite taking. She's by Kingman, but she's got an outstanding pedigree for getting a little bit further with that bit of quality as well. Her dam being a relative of the St. Ledger winner, Capri, also the Boodles winner, Brazil. So a pretty strong family and one which suggests a little bit of time and also a bit further. And she's going to be quite a force. You can see there the second, Prepense, running on strongly. She's also got a magnificent pedigree. She's a close relative of Hedman. We know how good he was when he stepped up to 10 furlongs. She moved really quite well through this. She showed a little bit of an experience. You can see her in the Judmont silks, widest to the left as we see it, but she ran on quite takingly. You can see exactly why she was placed where she was in the market. Have a look at the horses that have finished third, fourth and fifth. Canadian Smoke Show in third, Art of Magic in fourth, Luck in Brew in fifth, all of which had run once on the July course, different races, showed good form as well, or promising debuts. So it just stacks up to the fact that in my mind, commissioning has buried really good fillies here. They've been giving her a, a, a quote of, of 20 to 1 for the 1,000 guineas next year. She might get a little bit further still. As mentioned, she's, she's beaten quite an eye-catcher in the form of Propense. The third, the fourth, the fifth, they'd all run OK, to say the least, on their debuts and all had good pedigree. Some of them big price tags as well. Commissioning's one to, to, to keep on side. I don't know what kind of route they want to go with her. Uh, John Gosden, John and Thady Gosden, of course, like races like the May Hill. Will they be looking at something like that? As they might try a mile at Donny St. Ledger meeting, something they did with Inspiral, of course, last year. I don't know where they see her as regards the pecking order, but Frankie de Tori was suitably impressed. He said about how long it took to pull her up. He said early stages in the race, he thought he might be lucky to be placed, but by the end of it, Wish she'd gone away. That was, that was a really good debut uh, from commissioning. She's got an outstanding pedigree. And on the visuals of what we've just seen, she's quite taking indeed. Commissioning is very much one to go forward with.
We're going to go back to Goodwood on the final day of the Qatar Goodwood Festival, Saturday for the 245, which was a race that, that you had to have a look back at. It was the Qatar Lily Langtree Stakes. It was a group two for the Phillies and Mares. It's run over the mile and three quarters, one mile and six. The money had come for the Bally Doyle Philly. Emily Dickinson, 15 to eight, 74, 13 to eight, the three year old going back up in trip. She'd, well, she'd shown her ability prior over a mile and six. Cela Rosa, very much a Philly in the moment, nine to four, forbearance, six to one. Yes, yes. Not seen for quite a while. She was 9-1 to one for her return. Viola at 14. 16's Glen Artney. We'll see her in a minute because she didn't start very well. An urban artist, 18-1, to one, the outsider of those who went forward, the seven. Um, but a huge, huge player as the race would play out. I'm sure plenty of you have seen this, but you've got to take a look back at this race. Glen Artney, there she is. She pretty much dropped down to her feet. The rider almost hitting the deck from the start. But from this point onwards, good balance shown from the rider on Glen Artney, but she ended up finishing last under Ross Coakley. It was all about Urban Artist and what she went on to do over this mile and six. And in fact, if you look at the sectional times available on the racingtv.com website, you'll see that in contrast to the filly in fourth, Urban, um, Emily Dickinson, Urban Artist clocked up the first uh, half mile of the race plus in a time some three seconds quicker than Emily Dickinson. At times, she had huge leads and uh, Jason Hart, who I think has judged this extremely well, he's just been reeled in. Yes, yes was sat in second. Cela Rosa under Tom Marcon, more in which in a moment, sat there in third. And then a bigger gap back to Emily Dickinson in fourth. We'll talk about the way that she closed in this race in a few moments' time. But J Jason Hart saying aboard uh, the eventual uh, second urban artist, what a run she had from the front. He said that Huey Morrison had left it to him, saying that she's... Well, she's got plenty of stamina. Make use of her. That's exactly what he, uh, what he did on this on this mare, who's now got Group 2 place as a consequence of this. She'd been a good second in a handicap here the previous year. She'd won here, so she had good form here at Goodwood. And in truth, she's made this the huge test that it was. Yes, yes, was sat there in second. She's not run too badly. First up run for the year. Cela Rosa, who closed. And I think this is just looking at the figures. An excellent ride from Tom Marcond. He was really revealing. When you look at the figures she clocked up, strong in the last half mile of a race, it was really revealing and it was fleshed out by what Tom Marcond said. He said that when you've got one loose on the front end, well, you just got to take your time so that your horse is catching, but not so much that effectively you're a sitting duck to the second wave coming and getting you. He actually said and cited the fact that he'd been watching the Tour de France and was quite inspired with how uh, they do things, of course, on the, on the two wheels. But he was alert to what was going on. He didn't want Urban Artist, who he felt would be coming back. She, in the end, stuck about. He didn't want to get too far clear. But he was also alert to what was going on further back. Spot the Bally Doyle runner, Emily Dickinson, in the Magnia Silks. She was always likely to enjoy the mile and six. She's played catch up here. And in stark contrast to what we had at the start of the race, where Urban Artist was running really strong in the early stages, Emily Dickinson has finished the fastest of all of these uh, by quite some way. She's clocked up quite strong figures in the final few furlongs of the race. She was the fastest through the final three, but she just wasn't in the position that Cela Rosa, under Tom Markand, was to capitalise. You can see there, Urban Artist in the hands of Jason Hart. Well, she'd done so much running by this point, but she didn't cave. Yes, yes, over on the far side towards her inner came to, came to get her, but maybe... Maybe just maybe race fitness told for her. Emily Dickinson closing, but Cela Rosa was in the right place in the hands of Tom Markand. She's very much a filly for now. She's proved she's got the Marlin six. She's got that bit of class about her as well. There are options taking her forward. She's got a, a Yorkshire Oaks entry. Do they want to go and take on Free Wind? I don't know, based on Haydock. But they've also got an option to take her for the Irish St. Ledger. That might just be her race. She's very much a filly for now. You never know, she might meet an Emily Dickinson and so on in that particular race. Maybe she'll go for the St. Ledger. She's got stamina in abundance and you can see the way that the race has played out. Those final three furlongs for her, given the sort of, well, topsy-turvy nature of the race with the times, the set times, the sectional times, she, she closed really strongly over the, the final three furlongs, did all of her running to try and catch up. She almost got there. The market foretold a big run and it almost paid for Emily Dickinson. So there you are, there is Cela Rosa, who took out a, a scintillating running 
of the Qatar Lily Langtree Stakes. An excellent run, of course, uh, from Urban Artists and a valuable bit of Group 2 placing for her. That was just such a fascinating race to watch. The huge, huge wide margins that you could see, um, of course, in the run. The big gaps between Urban Artist and Yes, Yes. With Cee Rosa not too far away and further back to Emily Dickinson. There were different races going on within one. You can see on the visuals and the time backed it up exactly what Urban Artist was doing in those early stages. Also, the way that Emily Dickinson closed. Will the winner be off to York or maybe off to Ireland for the Irish St Ledger? We shall see. Hopefully, that was a fair spread of uh, decent races from Goodwood with, of course, Baid winning the Sussex Stakes. We saw there was Cee Rosa, the promise of the Platinum Queen as well. But, but maybe just the potential from the weekend we've just seen coming away from the two-day meeting at Newmarket. The outstanding Noble Style and Mill Stream, they're both going for pattern races at York when next seen. Noble Style likely to go for the gym crack, sticking to the six furlongs, but maybe we'll see even more improvement from a very good horse that Jane Chappelheim rates a lot in the form of Mill Stream, who's going to go uh, for the Acom Stakes, not taking on the winner again, going up an extra furlong. And do keep in mind commissioning. She was very, very good. Commission, sorry, after what she did on debut, daughter of Kingman with an outstanding staying pedigree down the dam side as well, closely rela uh, related to Capri, the winner of the St Ledger. So hopefully a fair mix of, of potential and, and now horses look back on, on the verdict this week uh, as we crunch some numbers as well, look some facts and figures and quotes, of course, over the last few days in racing from Goodwood and Newmarket. That's it from me. Hope you enjoyed the show and the trackers will be bringing, brimming after what we've just seen.